When you were in grade 7, you've learned about the descriptors of motion in one dimension which govern on moving objects traveling in either two of straight lines at uniform acceleration. So it can be constant acceleration or the horizontal or motion in a straight line. And of course, the vertical motion or what we call the free fall. In this lesson, we're going to discuss about the projectile motion. Specifically, at the end of this lesson vlog, you'll be able to know or you'll be able to learn and to define what projectile and projectile motion is, illustrate the path travel by a projectile, and for number three, you have to appreciate the application of projectile motion in relation to sports. Hello my dear students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me once again, Teacher Tin, your science teacher for the day. So, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science Now. Do you still remember the topic that we discussed about uniform acceleration? Ano nga ba pag sinabi natin uniform acceleration? So when we say uniform acceleration, uniform acceleration is when the speed of an object changes at the same rate. Yes, kapag yung bilis na isang bagay, let's say for example, isang kotse, so yung bilis niya ay nagbabago, pero parehas lang yung rate. Ito ang tinatawag natin na uniform acceleration. And did you know that this has something to do with what we know as kinematics? Because this uniform acceleration leads to the study of motion using the equations known as the kinematics. In knowing the details, kagaya ng kung gaano kabilis ang isang object, uh, kung gaano kabilis siya gumalaw after given an, an time interval, rather than just the fact that the object is moving, that is our primary interest in today's lesson. So, to describe the properties, uh, not just the properties, but the characteristics, behavior of the motion with greater detail, okay, so, meron tayong mga equations na kailangan nating i-discuss for today. Ano-ano nga ba yung mga equation na yun? So, ihanda nyo ang sarili ninyo dahil maraming mga equations ang may kinalaman dito sa tinatawag natin na kinematics. Okay, so before we discuss about the four equations involved in kinematics in horizontal motion, so let us discuss first kinematics. Ano nga ba yung paulit-ulit nating naririnig na kinematics? So, this kinematics is a branch of physics that defines motions with respect to space and time, ignoring the cause of that motion. Yun yung tinatawag natin na kinematics. And that kinematic equations are a set of equations that can be, uh, that can derive from a known aspect of a bodies in motion in other aspects that are provided. So ngayon, dun sa ating ibibigay sa inyo na equations in kinematics, so, magkaiba ang sa horizontal at saka sa vertical motion. So, these equations links five kinematic variables. Kaya, pag nakita nyo itong mga variables na to, dapat alam nyo na, ah, okay, this one is for displacement, ito ay para sa initial velocity, and so on. So, again, these equations link five kinematic variables. So, these are the five variables that involves in the kinematic equation. The first one is the displacement. Pag may nakita kayo nung parang triangle na may x, so, di ba, that's, uh, kung magbabasay mo, change in x, or that x denotes the displacement. So, again, displacement is denoted by that uh, triangle x, or change in x, or change in displacement. While that vo, yung v, tapos merong subscript na 0, that is the initial velocity. And, di ba, nung nakaraan naman natin mga discussion, pag sinabi natin VO, that's initial velocity. The third one is the final velocity. So, ang final velocity is denoted by letter V. Yung symbol na V, that is the, the final velocity. And, of course, we also have the small letter T. That uh, small letter T is... Uh, for the time interval. Again, the time interval is denoted by the small t. And of course, the last one is the constant acceleration which is denoted by small letter a. So, tatandaan nyo yung limang variables na yan na gagamitin natin sa equations na ipapaliwanag ko mamaya. Okay, so these are the four basic kinematic equations. The first equation is v is equal to initial velocity 
plus acceleration times the time interval. Okay? So, unang-unahin yung gawin dyan. So, you have to multiply first the acceleration, the constant acceleration, and the time interval. And then, you have to add it to the initial velocity. Okay, next. The second equation is the change in x, which is the change in displacement. So, to, to get the change in displacement, so our equation is uh, final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2 times the time interval. So, dun sa naka-equation natin dito, naka, yeah, yung naka-parenthesis. So, kukunin muna natin yung average velocity and then we will we will multiply it by the time interval. And then the third one is the for the change in displacement is equal to we have to multiply the initial velocity times the time interval plus one half of constant acceleration multiplied to the squared of the time interval. So, uh, ch change in x plus VOT plus one half AT squared. Okay, number four is the squared of the final velocity is equal to the squared of the initial velocity plus two times the constant velocity multiplied to the change in displacement. At kailangan nyo rin palang tandaan na these four kinematic equations can only be utilized to predict the unknown information about the object's motion if other information is present. So these equations can only be utilized if the motion undergoes constant velocity or a motion having a constant acceleration. Now, what if the motion acted solely by gravity and that is also an example of uniform acceleration having constant value of acceleration due to gravity. Ano nga ba acceleration due to gravity? That is 9.8 meter per second squared. Ibig sabihin, ang motion ay downward, pababa. And it is associated with the free falling, okay, yung ating straight line, ano, downward force, and of objects thrown vertically straight in line to the air. So, pag, di ba, pag mainit siya tayo, so pag bagsak nun, straight siya, pababa. So, using this, we also transform our kinematic equations uh, along the horizontal to kinematic equations along the vertical by changing variable x to y and a to ag. Meaning to say, yung pinakita ko sa inyong equation kanina, yun din ang magiging equations natin. Papalitan lang natin. Kung kanina ang ating displacement ay change in x, di ba? Yung triangle tapos may x kasi nga horizontal ang motion, di ba? Sa Cartesian plane, di ba meron tayong Cartesian plane. So, yung horizontal, di ba ayun yung x-axis. So, horizontal siya. And then, di ba kapag vertical, yung patayo naman. So, ngayon, ang gagawin natin, dun sa displacement, instead of change in X, magiging na siyang change in Y. Kasi nga, tayo ay vertical motion. And then, that A, which is constant acceleration, for, uh, ano tawag dito? For, ver, uh, ano to? Horizontal. So, magiging na siyang vertical. So, it will be G. Kasi nga, we are talking about the acceleration due to gravity. So, again, we're going to change the variable from x to y and a to g. So, instead of a, it will be g. Okay, so when it comes to the characteristics of free fall motion, so there are some things that you need to know or to recall in applying the equations from the kinematic equations involving in vertical motion. Kagaya yung sabi ko kanina, yung binakita ko equation kanina sa horizontal motion, yun din ang gagamitin yung equation para sa vertical motion. Papalitan nyo lang yung mga variable from x to y and from a to g. Kumbaga, yung constant acceleration, yung magiging acceleration due to gravity. And of course, yung from horizontal, magiging vertical lang, kaya x to y. Pero yung yun din ang gagawin yung equations. Now, first that you have to consider uh, about, uh, about the free fall motion. So, an object in free fall experiencing acceleration. Kasi alam naman natin, free fall pababa. 
So, instead na acceleration yan ay horizontal, of course, ang acceleration yan ay baba. At alam naman natin na pare-parehas lang naman na acceleration kapag pababa because of the gravity. And that is 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, so the negative sign indicates a downward acceleration. So, whether explicitly stated or not, the value of the acceleration in the kinematic equation is negative 9.8 meter per second squared for any freely falling object. So, kaya sa mga problem solving, lagi nyong uh, pagmamasda, pagmamasdan, lagi nyong titignan mabuti or uh, basahin yung mabuti kung ito ba ay free fall. Basa ito ay free fall, automatic na magiging acceleration yan ay negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Sa kadahilanan nga na ito nga ay downward, pababa, di ba sa Cartesian plane, kapag going down, so, nandun siya sa may pakababa. So, negative yun. Kaya, ang magiging acceleration natin sa free fall ay negative 9.8 meter per second squared. Pangalawa, if an object is merely dropped, okay, binagsak, so, as opposed to being thrown, so, di ba, pag initya mo, so, pataas yun. Tapos ngayon, if an object is merely dropped, so, binagsak naman, from an elevated height, Okay, kunwari, nakat nasa building ka. Tapos bigla mong may binagsak ka na bagay. So, the initial velocity of an object is 0 meter per second. Okay, again. If an object is merely dropped, as opposed to being thrown, so from an elevated height, then the initial velocity will be 0 meter per second. Pangatlo, if an object is projected upwards, oh, pataas naman, in a perfectly vertical direction, then it will slowly down as it rises upward. So, the instant at which it reaches uh, the peak of its trajectory, its velocity will be 0 meter per second. Okay, so, yung value na to, this value can be used as one of the motion parameters in kinematic equations. Yun ang mga tatandaan nyo when it comes to free fall. The fourth one, if an object is projected upwards in perfectly vertical direction, then the, vol then, uh, then the velocity at which it is projected is equal in magnitude and opposite in sign to the velocity that it has when it returns to the same height. Okay, so for this lesson, you will be able to learn the definition of projectile motion, kagaya na sinabi natin kanina sa una, and associated concepts. And furthermore, you will also learn that projectile motion consists of two motions where we can apply the kinematic equations for both the vertical and the horizontal motion. Okay, so this is the end of our part 1 of this lesson. So in our next lesson, we will discuss na talaga natin yung projectile motion. So for now, we discuss muna natin yung example ng horizontal and vertical motion okay, using kinematics equation. So stay tuned on this channel because on our next part, we will be discussing about the projectile motion. So stay tuned and please leave your comment kung napanood nyo na video na ito. And then, abangan nyo nga pala dahil magkakaroon tayo ng free session ng... Uh, tutorial, online tutorial. So, stay tuned lang dito sa channel ito. Ipopost ko some other time kung ano yung mga uh, pwede yung uh, pa, kung paano kayo magre-register para sa free online session. Okay. Uh, siguro sa bakasyon ito. Ano? So, hanggang dito na lang and stay tuned on this channel. I am Teacher Ting. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science Now. Bye!